Game Day, Tiki and Rondé Barber. It was the play Coach Mike liked to call Old Bread and Butter. Tiki and Rondé knew it by heart. It went like this. The quarterback took the snap and looked left as both ends broke to their left. Then, with a quick spin, the quarterback pitched the ball back to Tiki, who followed his brother to the opposite side. From there, if everything clicked, it was off to the races. And this time, everything did click. The defensive end ran towards the quarterback. Staying behind Rondé, Tiki sprinted into the clear. The goal line was 60 yards away. At the 20-yard line, two defensive backs closed in on Tiki. Rondé, leading the way, dove at the knees of the first defender and bounced into the second as all three players went down. Tiki leaped high and kept on going. Touchdown, Vikings! Tiki Barber, number 22, scores, the announcement called out. Rondé saw his whole team converge on the end zone, and he sat up and made his way to the milling crowd. He was limping a little. The block he had thrown had somehow hurt his ankle. Tiki, Tiki, all the Vikings crowd around Tiki and cheered, crowded around Tiki and cheered. Even some parents had come out onto the field. Rondé saw his mother looking at Tiki and waving. He wondered, if I hadn't made that block, Tiki wouldn't have scored. Didn't he? Anyone notice that I... Coach Mike came up beside Rondé and patted him on the shoulder. Nice game, the coach said. And then he added, That twin brother of yours, he's amazing. That's his seventh long touchdown run this season. Yeah, Rondé said, his head down. You okay, the coach asked. Yeah, I'm okay, Rondé said in a quiet voice. He didn't feel like talking to anyone as he hobbled across the field. It was Tuesday afternoon, and the twins were in their room doing homework. Rondé suddenly looked up from his book and said, Guess how long it took Lewis and Clark to go from the Mississippi River to the Pacific Ocean? Don't know, Tiki said. A couple weeks? A couple weeks? It took almost two years, Rondé grinned. That's what you know. Well, if two guys row all day, it wasn't just two, Rondé answered. No way, he pointed to his book. It took almost 40 to get there, a whole bunch. The twins' mother popped their head into the room. Surprise, she whispered. Someone's here to talk with you. A reporter with the Roanoke newspaper was doing a feature story about the city's peewee league. There was a photographer with him, too. Are you Tiki? The reporter asked, looking down at Rondé. Rondé shook his head. Uh-uh he pointed at his twin brother. The reporter turned to Tiki and said, your coach tells me you've already scored seven touchdowns in four games. What's your secret? Tiki, like Rondé, felt funny talking to adults. He pawed the floor with one foot. Then in a low voice, he said, I, I just keep on running. I do my best and the game happens around me. The reporter went on talking to Tiki. Those are some long runs, 60, 70 yards. Don't you get out of breath? Sometimes, Tiki smiled shyly, but I keep running. The reporter turned to the photographer. Let's take his picture outside, holding a football. They turned to go outside while Rondé stayed behind. Then the boy's mother called out, How about taking both boys' picture together? They're a team. Rondé is Tiki's best blocker. Sure, said the reporter. Great idea. Later, as the boy's mother cooked dinner, Rondé mumbled in a soft voice to her. Guys who block and stuff like that, nobody notices. People just notice the guy who scores touchdowns. His mother was silent for a moment. Rondé went on. I'm fast too. At the tryouts this fall, I was as fast as Tiki. Why don't I carry the ball more? His mother seemed to be thinking, hmm. Then she popped a funny question. Who cooks dinner here? Rondé looked up. Why is mom talking about dinner now? You do, he answered. 
And if I were to stop, his mother asked. Ronnie made a face and thought, we'd probably be eating peanut butter all the time. But before he could say that, his mother jumped in with an answer. I'll tell you, we'd all starve. And who carries out the garbage each night? Me and Tiki. Right on, Buster. And if you guys didn't, Rande smiled. We'd all have to walk around like this, his mom said as she pinched her nose. She laughed. It's a good thing we work together here, isn't it? Saturday arrived, but Rande's ankle was still slightly, slightly swollen. He sat on the bench in his street clothes next to Coach Mike. Can I maybe play a little in the second half, he pleaded. No way, Jose, the coach said firmly. Besides, next week's game is the big one. Let's get you ready for that. Tiki trotted over to the bench out of breath from pre-game warm-ups. Hey, Coach Mike said, laughing and pointing to Rande. Let's win one for your brother here. The Vikings crowded around the coach and Rande. Yeah, yeah, they yelled. Tiki and Rande gave each other a high five. Tiki said, rest up. We really need you next week. Today I'm going to break a couple of long ones for you, Rande. Watch me. Yet, easier said than done. Again and again, Tiki cut through the line, dodged a slow-footed lineman, only to find himself trapped by two or three defensive backs who hemmed in and drove him out of bounds. A few times, Rondé leaped to his feet and called, Go, Tiki, go! But it didn't do any good. Cheering helps, Coach Mike said. But not as much as a few solid blocks, he then added softly. He's missing his main man. Rondé looked over at his coach, wondering, is Coach Mike talking about me? The game was tied after three quarters. Finally, in the fourth quarter, the Vikings slowly ground their way to the winning touchdown. But where, where, were, Tiki long, where were Tiki's long gainers? Not today. Not today. It was the following Wednesday, practice day before their game with the toughest team in the league, the Knights. Rondé felt like a coat who, colt who had been let out of the barn. He hopped up and down to test his ankle. He led the team in the warm-up around the track. He loved the breeze on his face and the feel of the cinders under his shoes. Coach Mike told Rondé and Tiki to take turns catching and returning punts. As Tiki watched from the bench, Rondé caught 10 high spiraling punts in a row without dropping one. And after each catch, he zigzagged and sprinted downfield for 20 yards and then came back. When it was Tiki's turn, Rondé went to the sidelines. Paco, Rondé and Tiki's best friend, jogged over to where Rondé was sitting. Paco was heavier than the twins and slower. He played on the offensive line and was a solid blocker. Yo, Rond! Hey, Pac. Paco sat down next to Rondé, breathing heavily. Hitting those blocking dummies is hard work, he said. Rondé looked at Paco. Pac, you ever get tired of just blocking for the other guys? Sometimes, but I figure someone's got to do it. And when I do it okay, it feels good. And when we win, it feels really good. Yeah. I wish I could run fast like you and Tiki, but I can't. So, Rondé and Paco were quiet for a moment. Paco went on. My dad always says this funny thing. He says, you got to play your best with the cards you are dealt. You know, like... A loud whistle interrupted their conversation. Practice was over, but Coach Mike was calling, Rondé and Tiki, over here for a few more minutes. We've got a new trick play for Saturday, on the double. Rondé jumped to his feet. What was this about? Later, he called back to Paco as he ran off. Saturday was overcast. The wind swirled and died down and swirled again. The ninth were wearing shiny black uniforms. The gray skies seemed to make the players even look even bigger. Parents stood behind the Vikings bench and filled the bleachers. Rondé looked over and spotted his mother. She smiled, gave him a thumbs up, and mouthed the words she always used, play proud. The Vikings gathered around Coach Mike, then jogged onto the field. The boys were psyched up as the game started. The game was expected to be close and at halftime it was tied. Only once, late in the third quarter, did Tiki, behind a great block from his brother, break away for a long touchdown run. But the Knights' bigger size began to show. Slowly, yard by yard, they drove to a touchdown 
and then edged ahead. What now? The Vikings were on their own 40-yard line. It was starting to drizzle, and the clock was running down. The Vikings' blue uniforms were smeared with dirt. Rondé sprinted to the sidelines, listened to the coach, and then raced back. He ducked into the huddle to announce the play. Coach Mike says, he looked at Tiki, it's time for the old bread and butter, plus one. Jason, the quarterback, glanced up. Huh? He mumbled. What's the plus one? Tiki broke in. Don't worry. It's the same old play with something added. Let's do it, Paco called out as the team headed for the line of scrimmage. Jason took the snap. He faked the pass to the left and wheeled around. He shoveled the football back to Tiki, who veered outside the onrushing end. Tiki threaded his way downfield behind his brother, but three defensive backs were closing in. Then something strange happened. Rondé seemed to miss his block and slide sideways past the defenders. The three tacklers, sure of themselves now, headed for Tiki. It seemed like it was all over. In a split second, Tiki leaped into the air and spun around. With all his strength, he lobbed a cross-field lateral pass to Rondé. The football wobbled and dipped. But Rondé, without breaking stride, bent forward and snatched it cleanly just above his shoes. He tucked the football under his arm and was off. Rondé ran faster and faster with his eyes on the goalpost. The 30-yard line, the 20, the 10. Touchdown, Rondé Barber, the announcer called out in a loud voice. The Vikings win 20 to 15. Rondé stood in the end zone and looked back. The whole team was racing downfield toward him. Tiki was there first. Together, he and Rondé held the ball high in the air. The Vikings gathered around. Many hands reached in to touch the winning football. You did it, Tiki shouted at Rondé. Rondé laughed. No, bro, you did it. Then he stopped. No. We both did it. Then he stopped himself again. No, we all did it. Hooray, Vikings.